Welcome back into Tide Talk Live. Stacy Blackwood joined as always by my good buddy Jake Thomas to get you primed and ready for the week seven matchup between Alabama and Arkansas. Uh, the Crimson Tide are coming off that big road win over Texas A&M this last weekend, Jake. Uh, they've kind of took a stronghold in the SEC West and kind of looked to kind of build on that uh, here in week seven against Arkansas. We're going to dive into that matchup here on today's episode. Uh, Jake, how, how you doing, man? Doing good, buddy. And yeah, uh, you're talking about Alabama taking the stranglehold on the SEC West. Like we've talked about, buddy, everything's still in front of this team. And, and that's what, uh, I, you know, we're, we're recording this on a, on a Monday night. But uh, Jalen Milrow today in, in his little press conference said that the team knows its goals are still ahead of them. So, uh, so the team at least knows what the goal is. And I feel like the unity is getting there with this team. Yeah, I feel like the, the, the pieces are kind of coming together for this Alabama team. And another thing he said was that they're not a finished product. And so mm -hmm. they know there's still work to be done. There's stuff they need to, to clean up. Obviously, we'll talk about all that on, on tonight's episode. But uh, before we get into all that, Jake, we do want to make sure you do like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. We appreciate all the support. Thank you so much for those that are already subscribed. Mm -hmm. And those of you that are tuning in, it means a great deal to us. The support is unbelievable. Um you know, we've gained we, – we've had about 10,000 views in the past seven days on our channel. So, just been a, a real good week for us, and we appreciate all the support. And so, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel so you don't miss uh, any of our stuff. And, and as you can see there, we are brought to you by BetUS and Latour and & Watches. We'll tell you more about those guys here in a moment. Uh, Jake, before we get into this Alabama-Arkansas matchup, uh, is there anything you want to kind of clean up from the A&M game? Yeah, there's uh there's something that I want to you know uh, share here with you guys um, that I've I absolutely love and uh, let me get it let me get it worked up here. So this is that this is you know our defense is we're on the field. Matt Johnson's getting the ball here. I just want you know as much as the defensive front, you know we talked about how Freddie Roach needed to make a statement with the defensive line this year because he was – we felt like he was playing for his job and he was coaching for his job this year. The, the, just let it play out. I mean, and it slows it down for you. But already you've got one lineman down here. You've got another offensive lineman tumbling here. you got Dallas Turner just wreaking havoc on this left tackle here. When, when was the last time you have seen a – Alabama defensive front have take care of take down pretty much three out of their five linemen. We got one lineman here. Don't even know who to block. You know, <laughs> that, that was one thing that, you know, I'm like, okay, this team is, is different. And the other thing, and, and we're going to go back to this right here. It's got sound to it. So let me clean that, but look at that. Yeah. This was, this, this was on that penalty boneheaded. I mean, it's a boneheaded play. Penalty or not, we, we've already talked about it. But, look, that is a red-shirt sophomore. Accountability. Yeah, a red-shirt sophomore, guys, getting in the face of, of a leader of the team. And it's like, come on, man, what are you doing? You know, we don't yeah. need that. We exactly. don't need that right now. We did not need that. And, honestly, I mean, it it almost – I don't want to say it was, it was a big play because it would have put us up by two scores, but it almost come back to haunt us in the long run. Good thing the offense was able to to capitalize later on and get a get an extra touchdown, but I mean going up fourteen, you know there would have been huge or thirteen would have been huge, and we just had a mental lapse and uh, you know accountability man. I love seeing a redshirt sophomore getting in the face of a of a junior like that. It's like come on man, hold each yep. other accountable. The, the leadership definitely appears to be there this year. Something that I feel like, especially on the field leadership, you know, that, that's kind of in your face. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like that was maybe lacking the last couple seasons. Uh, that's not something that's lacking this year, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, we, we've seen great leadership from Dallas Turner. You saw it there from Deontay Lawson. And mm -hmm. so I, I'm with you, Jake. The accountability has been there. And mm -hmm. I think that's why you're starting to see this team improve each and every week, Jake. And that mm -hmm. first play you showed, I believe that was the, the play directly before the safety that occurred yep. there against Max mm -hmm. Johnson and the Aggies offense. So, yeah, the, that defensive front was completely – they owned the second half of that game, Jake. That, that was the difference in the game. I know Milro had a fantastic game. Burton and Bond did too. But but mm -hmm. the defensive front for Alabama, I think they 
I think I think since the Texas game, uh, in the second half against opponents, I think the defense is allowing about 120 yards and about three points a, a, in the second half of, of all wow. of the last four games. So mm-hmm. just an incredible effort by Kevin Steele and, and those guys, and, and they've really made a tremendous stride in the right direction. And, you know, they just keep getting better and better each and oh, every man. week. And, and, and it starts with that defensive front. You know, guys like Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell, mm-hmm. Tim Keenan, Justin Boyby, Tim Smith, Jaheim Otis, all those guys are playing, you know, really the best football of their career, and, and it couldn't have come at a better time because with, with the way the offense is slowly progressing – the defense needs to carry the team right now, and so far mm-hmm. they're doing it. Yeah, man. You know, but like I mentioned a while ago, we we really felt like the defensive line needed to step up this year, uh, especially a couple guys. You know, we talked about Justin and Borgby. We talked about Tim Smith. You know, Tim Smith has not really been a factor like we thought he would, but look what he's doing this year, man. I mean, he mm-hmm. is having a career year, I feel like. Uh, Jaheim Otis is – you know, he had a really good freshman – season but he's done really well this year as well and then justin boy but he's been in this program for you know four i think four or five years now and he is just now i feel like he he showed flashes that we talked about he is playing some of his best ball he's he's done in the last five years at alabama so you know get give credit with credit do you freddie roach has done an amazing job with with this defensive front and i really feel like i I talked to some people about this today i really feel like the schemes help our defensive front better this year than previous years have well as as yogi Berra famously said half the game is 90 percent mental and and i think i think the mental side of it is just different i think the the intensity level is different i think they play with with just a different uh, mindset, Jake. I, yeah. I really believe that this year un, under under Kevin Steele, and I think Robert Ball has made a tremendous yes. impact, especially with the inside linebackers. Uh, I'm not sure there's there's a better trio of inside linebackers than uh, you know Deontay Lawson, Trez Marshall, and Jihad mm-hmm. Campbell. I mean th- those dudes, and then then you throw in a guy like Kendrick Blackshire mm-hmm. when he's gotten to play, he's played really well. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think Robert Ball has made a tremendous impact on this defense as well, and I, I don't want to overlook that. But the defense was the story of the day to me against AM, even despite the performance that Milro put together. Obviously, career day. He made the plays that were there. there. Burton got open. Bond got open. And they really exposed that secondary for AM. And that, that's something they can build on moving forward in SEC play because, you know, when you face teams like Tennessee, like LSU, you're going to have to score a little bit more – than, than what you might have to against a like, team like A and M, but uh, just a, a, a great job by that defense. Kevin Steele has those guys playing, and uh, you know Caleb Downs gets a pick, his second pick of his career, and just continues to be a playmaker for this defense as a true freshman. So, uh, re- really proud of the way that defensive of the defensive performance against A and M. Yeah, I agree. And one other thing I want to mention real quick is when when Malachi went down, I really feel like Terry and Arnold did really good stepping in the star. They get kind of shift him around and put Amos out there uh, at, at corner where Arnold would be at. But I felt like he – I think he got beat one time, but he made a great play to to get back into the route and knock the ball away. But uh, I think – I don't know how long Malachi is going to be out, but, you know, we've got we've got people all over the place in the secondary that can play. So I'm, I'm not too concerned. I just had it for Malachi because he was, again, having kind of like a freshman-type year that he had, you know, when he was a freshman in Alabama. He's just been all over the place this year. Yeah, and like Jake mentioned a little bit ago, we are recording this on Monday night, so there's not been any any real news on, on the status of Malachi Moore. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that is definitely something worth worth monitoring because he he's he, he's quite possibly the MVP of the Alabama defense. Yeah. I'm not saying he's the best player, but uh, he might be the most valuable because of, of his experience, uh, because all the, all the calls he makes there in the back end and getting everybody else lined up. So – uh, his presence will be missed, but like you said, Terry and Arnold did a good job filling in at star, mm-hmm. and then Trey o- Amos did a pretty solid job, you know, uh, taking the place of Terry on Arnold. So mm-hmm. it's just about ne- next man up mentality, and you know, everybody's got to be ready. So we'll kind of see what happens uh, with the status of Malachi Moore moving forward. But, uh, Jake, uh, that's going to wrap up the, the A&M talk. And here in a minute, we're going to get to our keys to victory uh, for the Arkansas game. But before we do that, we do got to uh, uh, go to break real quick, and we'll be back on the other side. All right, guys, I want to tell you a little bit about BetUS.com. Make sure you click the link in the description below, sign up today, and make that first deposit. And when you do, you will be – 
instantly rewarded with a 125% bonus from BetUS.com. And then you will also be entered into our contest for a $500 giveaway once we receive 30 signups from our link. So click the link in the description below and sign up today at BetUS.com. All right, Jake. So we hope you all follow the description there in the video below or in the description below uh, for BetUS and sign up today and receive not only that 125% deposit from BetUS, but then be entered into the contest for, that we will have here once we have 30 signups from that link for, for a possible $500. I mean, you're not going to get that anywhere else. So appreciate that. All right, Jake, keys to victory for Alabama against Arkansas. Um, you know, we could be cliche and kind of <laughs> keep it like it always is each and every week. It starts up front on both sides of, of the ball, and it starts on the line of scrimmage. Uh, but, but, Jake, I want to I want to start here. It's going to be key for Alabama to slow down the inside running game of Arkansas. Mm-hmm. That that that's that's where Arkansas can beat you if they're going to beat you anywhere is is with with the massive KJ Jefferson as as a running quarterback. Rocket Sanders is a really good running back. So they're a physical team, Jake. They have physical runners. So it's going to be key for guys like Tim Keenan, Justin Aboyby, Tim Smith, Jaheim Otis, those guys to play well uh, in, in run support. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. That's how they can hurt you. And uh, they, um, you know, they, they – this Arkansas team is so funny because I, I really felt like if you go back and, and watch our, some of our previous episodes, I really thought – I had a bold prediction on the SEC slate this year – that I felt like they was going to finish second in the, in the West this year. Well, they're, you know, I don't know what's gotten into them. Cave Jefferson is really good. Rock Sanders is really good, but they just, I don't know. So uh, things just have not shaped out like I, I, I'm assuming Razorback fans have thought either. So uh, this is going to be interesting. I think Alabama opened up like an eighth and a half, 19 and a half point favorite. You know, I, I think that's a little too high right now, but I mean, Alabama, if they play their game, they can win this easily. But KJ Jefferson is still a really talented quarterback. He just has some issues this year. And Rocket Sanders is probably one of, one of the best in, in this league uh, running the ball. So, And they, they still got playmakers on offense. So uh, it's going to be very critical for you know the defense to uh, to play up to, to the way they have the last several weeks for sure. Yeah, no doubt. And, and you look at Arkansas's record, Jake uh, – you know they've beat two cupcakes and but lost four games, Jake, and and three of them they had a chance to win. I mean, aside from the A and M loss where, where they really wasn't in it, especially late in the second half. But last week against Ole Miss, they had a chance. They had a lead in the, in the I think either the late third quarter, early fourth quarter in that game, mm-hmm. but they blew it. They outgained BYU by nearly twice as many yards and blew it. Yep. Um, LSU. <laughs> LSU. They blew that in Baton Rouge. So, yep. uh, they're, they're close, Jake. It's not that they're a bad football team, but, but Jake, there is something to say about teams. You know, we talk about teams finding a way to win. Well, this Arkansas team just finds ways to lose. And, right. uh, you know, it's not looking good for Sam Pittman right now. Uh, I like Sam Pittman. I think he's a good That's coach, true. but, uh, f- for whatever reason, they just, they've just been finding ways to lose each and every week this season. Yeah. Yeah. I really like Sam Pittman as well, but you know, the, the, the head coach is always a fall guy. So, you know, yeah. unfortunately I, I think some of the hires this year uh, offensively weren't, weren't the best. So I think that's kind of hamstrung uh, the team offensively, but he's going to be the fall guy, unfortunately. And like you said, I really like Sam Pittman as well. Yeah. Well, their offensive line has not been a, a strong suit this season, Jake. And that's, that's rare for Arkansas. Usually they're pretty yeah. decent up front and they, they just have not been that good. K.J. Jefferson's constantly under duress. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Rocket Sanders doesn't have a lot of room to work with or navigate through. So it's been rough to get their two best players going because that offensive line has not really lived up to expectations there in Fayetteville. But, but Alabama's going to have their hands full, Jake, because Arkansas is going to come ready to play. It's right. an 11 a.m. kickoff on homecoming weekend. Uh, <laughs> Alabama's coming off that big road win over A&M. They're, they're on a high right now. So it wouldn't surprise me, I guess, if Alabama started off a little sluggish right. and, and, and Arkansas come in firing on all cylinders, you know, trying to pull off an incredible upset. So Alabama better come ready to play mm-hmm. or they might be in a closer game than what they what they anticipated. Yeah, absolutely, Stacey. Uh, you know, we talked about – I think I said it on our, on our, uh, our uh, instant reaction show last week um, – 
I really feel like this team in the first half of games now just weathers that storm. And then in the second half, they come out and dominate. And I feel like if we can weather the early on, early kickoff, the the emotion because it's going to be homecoming, all that, as long as we wait, you know, hold out until the second half, I really think the game's going to change uh, for the better. But, you know, it's all about, you know, getting that – if getting the rust off and and don't start out as slow as we normally have. I feel like the first series we need to go out and at least get three instead of just having a three and out like we've seen like we had the past couple games. Yeah, and speaking of which, you, you're talking about the offense, Jake, and mm-hmm. we'll kind of look at keys to victory for the Alabama offense. And that they've got to establish some – running game, Jake, and, and right. a consistent running game. And, and look, Arkansas is a decent team, Jake. They're not a great defensive team, but they're they're decent. So Alabama needs to come out and, and dominate the trenches offensively. You need to get guys like Jace and Roydell, even Justice Haynes going in the running game. Uh, you know, maybe feature some more runs for, for Jalen Milrow if that's something they want to do. They, they need to establish some sort of running game. And uh, you know, there's no better week to do that than this week because it's the next opponent. It's against an Arkansas team that's not elite defensively like A&M was. So uh, just just getting getting a ground game going con- on a consistent basis would, will be huge for Alabama. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. Uh, you know, I, I feel like the way this offense is set up, we're, we're, we should be running the ball a lot better. And uh, we haven't – don't really establish the run well in a lot of games here recently. So, uh, you know, I feel like getting the ground game going, like you mentioned, uh, is going to be a huge key to victory. And, uh, and also just helps out mill road getting, get adjusted into the game as well. Uh, and, you know, I, I feel like each and every week, this team is getting better. I know last week, the offensive line really struggled, you know, run, run protecting and all that run blocking, but pass block, and I really, really showed out, and, and I was really happy with how they they handled that. So, uh, you know, it needs it needs to be just continue, you know, getting better offensively each and every week, and this team's going to be fine. Yeah, no doubt about it. And and the running game is is going to be key for Alabama moving forward throughout the season because, you know, like I said, when you when you play teams like I don't know if it's going to be that critical this week against a team like Arkansas, but when you play Tennessee, when you play LSU teams who have good offenses, you're going to have to score some points, Jake. So you got to be balanced on offense. You can't just rely on Mil- Milrow's arm. Uh, you can't expect him to come out and throw for 300-something yards every game. Right. So mm-hmm. you have to establish some sort of running game. And and so it's up to that offensive line and those running backs to, to get going. Because I, I think it's easy to point to the offensive line as the reason the running game's not going. But, Jake, I think there's been plays to be made. Right. For the running backs, and and maybe sometimes they're not doing what they need to do. So, uh, mm-hmm. I think the offensive line has been a little bit better than what most people realize. And I think if people went back and watched the games, that they would kind of see that as well, because it's easier to see that on a second or third watch than what it is live when you you know you don't know the outcome of the game, so you're nervous, you're you're anxious, uh, and you you see the the back get tackled at the line of scrimmage. Well, was it because the guys didn't block well, or because he didn't? He didn't read the right hold. He didn't make the right cut. Right. So there's a lot of variables there when it goes to establishing a good running game. And so it, it takes it, – it's a team effort. And, and so the offensive line's got to block and the block backs have got to hit the right hole at the right time and, and make the right cuts as, as well. Yeah, I agree, Stacey. And, and I feel like it, it's slowly going to get there. You know, the offense – the offense is going to help each other out. And, and it just each and every week, they – somebody has improved – on, on either on the offensive line or in the or in the wide receiver room, you know, I feel I feel like we finally established our number one wide receiver now with with Jermaine Burton. Uh, really, his only case is just keeping it, you know, mental and and run that mouth. You know, that's going to get him eventually too. So, you know, hopefully that you know we can keep him crowd on that. But you know, like you said, he had a really great game last week, uh, but. You know, I feel like this team is getting better each and every week. If you go, if you honestly sit here and watch and go back and watch the games, you see the improvements that the team has made offensively since the very first game of the season. No, no doubt about it. All right, Jack, let's go, let's switch over now to players to watch. Uh, I want to start on the defensive side of the ball, Jake, for Alabama. Uh, who are you looking at this week as, as somebody who could? who needs to either make a big impact or could make a big impact for the Crimson Tide? 
Uh, defensively, I think um, I, I'm looking at uh, a guy like Kather Downs having another big game. Um, you know, and, and um, you know, I feel like the second day is going to have another chance to to have a big a big day. Um, another, I will say, an X factor. Uh, I will go with uh, you know Lawson or, or Campbell because I feel like we may need to spy a little bit more as well uh, with KJ because he likes to run a little bit as well, just just to keep him in check. So I'm my, my first guy is going to be Kather Downs. I really feel like he's going to get another pick this week to possibly seal the game for us. Yeah, what I players to watch. I'm looking at the entire defensive front because of the way they're going to have to rush KJ, and not only rush him, but if they get to him, they're going to have to try to bring that big dude down. Yeah, he's he's a hoss. He's a hoss, and he doesn't go down easy. So I mm -hmm. think Chris Braswell, Dallas Turner, those guys on the edge have to do a good job of setting the edge and not not letting him get outside of you. And then mm -hmm. once you collapse that pocket. You know, you got to get him down. I, you don't want to see a bunch of near sacks where he breaks away and picks up a first down on third and eight. If you get right. to him, you got to get him down. So uh, I'm looking at those edge players for Alabama uh, once again having a big day and and, and coming up big and, and getting some sacks. And I think right now Dallas Turner's third in the country in sacks. I think, you know, Braswell's in the top ten as well. I think Dallas Turner has six and a half. I think Braswell has four and a half or five. So, you know, they, they both, both have – fantastic seasons right now so um th those guys getting to jefferson and not only getting to jefferson but getting that big dude down that's that's yeah. the, i'm watching those two guys and seeing if they can do that and obviously that the, the interior players as well they're gonna have to do the same thing but you know you feel better you feel better about guys as big as jaheem otis and <laughs> tim keenan if they get you if they get their hands on you then you're most likely going down but you know you know braswell and and Turner, they're they're around the same weight as KJ Jefferson, so <laughs> it's not it won't be quite as easy for those guys. Yeah, absolutely, and that that's a good pick, Stacey. I I'm anxious to see how how the defensive line continues to to develop it and just get better. I, I've I've noticed a lot here in the last several games is uh, teams have been trying to do what they call the slant and you know slant blocking. And I've noticed that Tim Keenan has done an excellent job on that because, you know, he gets – he just follows his guy, gets off, and then he spins back around, and he's usually right there where the ball carrier is at. So I felt like – I feel like the defensive line uh, is, is getting better and getting – and seeing those slants come in and find their open and just at the right time to make a play in the backfield. Yeah, no doubt. The defensive line has been – I think they've been what the difference is for this defense mm -hmm. so far. So I agree. Uh, that that front seven's got to got to play well. So really, as players to watch defensively, to me, it's about that front seven. The front seven. The front seven <laughs> playing physical, stuff in the run, and then on passing situations, not allowing KJ Jefferson to break the pocket or break mm -hmm. a bunch of tackles to make explosive plays that way. So if you get to him, you got to get him down. So I'm watching that defensive front mm -hmm. there for the Crimson Tide. All right, Jake. Yeah. Offensively. Uh, this is this is where everybody likes to what everybody likes to see. They like to see the points. They like to see the high flying action. Uh, who are you looking at this week offensively to kind of to maybe break out or have a big game uh, against Arkansas? You know, I'm. Um, you, it's easy to go a skill guy because I mean they're they're the ones that are making plays. But I'm looking. I'm going to look at a guy. I I and I do not know if he's going to play this week. He played last week, and I was really impressed with him. But I got my eye on Jaden Daniel or Jaden uh, Roberts if he gets in, and, and on the on the offensive line. I felt like you know he been his first career start. He did a really good job at right guard in, in place of Dalcourt. I wasn't sure if Dalcourt was hurt or what, but I really felt like he did well. So I feel like we have a sixth and seventh guy now because we know what uh, Pritchett has been kind of reversing back and forth with Caden Proctor. But I feel like Roberts is coming on to be another guy with Terrence Ferguson and Pritchett that can come in off the bench if somebody goes down. So I'm I'm really excited to see him step up last week. And I got my eye on him just in case he does get in the game. I feel like he's going to uh, – he, he's he's a big bulldozer, I feel like, and can open up some holes in the running game. Yeah, I mean, he, he wasn't perfect by any stretch, but but given the fact – and by the way, uh, Dalcourt missed the game because he had some sh shoulder issues mm -hmm. uh, in the pregame. So, Roberts didn't even practice all week as the starter. Right. I mean, it was literally game day, and he's like, hey – and they're like, hey, you got to start. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, Ferguson's already been hurt, so he he hadn't, he hadn't he wasn't available. I'm not even sure he made the trip. No, he did make the trip. Mm -hmm. um, but 
so you're down to your third your third string guard, right? Against the best defensive front you're going to face all season. And, and I thought so he did good. <laughs> it was a tall order and a, and a big mm-hmm. ask, but but Roberts held his own against mm-hmm. Texas A and M. And, and I'm with you. If he gets to play, I'll, I'll obviously have a big eye on him. You know, mm-hmm. I mentioned Seth as my guy last week. Mm-hmm. I thought he played okay. It was it wasn't great, but it it was probably his best performance of the season. Not sure what how he graded out, but I thought he played better yeah. on a more consistent basis than what he had all season long. But um, I'm gonna I'm looking at uh, at a guy that that he had a big week this week, and I want to see him follow it up again, and that's Jermaine Burton, Jake. I'm yeah. not saying he's got to go for 197 again and three touchdowns or two touchdowns, whatever it was. Yeah. But I want to see him be a consistent playmaker. Get get yeah. five or six more grads for, you know, 90 to 120 yards and maybe a, a, a touchdown. Mm-hmm. But just be that consistent wide receiver one option for Jalen Milrow. Mm-hmm. Get open, make plays, and like you said, quit running that mouth and, <laughs> and just – play football that's what we need Jermaine Burton to be Jake he's a really good player and and you saw what type of player he can be last week against Texas A&M and and I hope he can follow that up with another a solid performance against Arkansas Uh, because if you if if Milrow can develop that chemistry with Burton we know what Bond is Bond's going to get open deep because you can't keep up with him (laughs) yeah and then but but what makes it easier for Bond to get open is if you know you got him in the slot on one side and if you got Jermaine Burton in the boundary one-on-one with a corner Mm -hmm. they're going to have to play a safety deep over the top because Burton's going to burn that corner Mm one-on-one what that's going to do is it it, you know you can get you you're going to have matchup nightmares in the back Mm -hmm. end with guys like Isaiah Bond Kobe Prentice uh, you know, Jalen Hale, uh, Malik Benson, once he gets rolling, Jaquir Brooks, if he ever gets to play again. So yeah. um, I just want to see Burton step up, be that true number one guy, and be a consistent player for Alabama wide receiver. Yeah, I agree, Says I love that pig. You know, we have talked about how Burton is, is no doubt our best route runner. And like you said, if you got if you got Isaiah Bond on one side in the slot, you know, a lot of eyes and attention going to be on him because – you know, of his speed. But if you got Burton on the opposite side, they're going to have to keep an eye on him as well because he can burn, like you said, that that corner and, and leave him out, out, you know, leave the safety out on an island by himself. And and Burton's going to win that 10 out of 10 times. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like that pick. And I feel like he's going to be be a guy that's going to continue being that number one option for Jalen Milrow moving forward. No doubt about it. All right, we're going to take one more quick break. Then we're going to get to our bowl predictions and our score predictions for Alabama, Arkansas. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, I want to tell you a little bit about Latour and Watches. If you click the link in the description below, you're going to be carried to latourandwatches.com where they have a vast selection of stylish yet affordable watches for all shapes and sizes. And when you click that link in the description below and you get carried to that website, when you sign out, you will receive free shipping on that watch. So make sure you follow the link in the description below and buy you a beautiful watch from Latour and Watches. All right, Jake, we're back now. Bowl prediction time, one of our favorite subjects each and every week. Bowl predictions are fun because you predict something that's not very likely to happen. I don't even remember what mine was last week. I think it was that Alabama would win by double digits, and they should have yeah. if not if not for the officials, but we, we won't get into that. <laughs> I forget what yours was from last week against A&M. We need to start keeping some kind of record of this so we can, <laughs> we can go back and see how well we're performing on right. our bowl predictions. But – um, th- this is always fun. Love bowl predictions. Kind of a just like I said, a fun topic to discuss each and every week. So, Jake, what hit me with your bowl prediction for Alabama, Arkansas? I think uh, my bowl prediction is collectively Alabama is going to have at least 200 yards rushing on the game. You know, whether that be, <laughs> oh, you I stole must, it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I really think, um, you know, McClellan, Roydell. Uh, some of them guys are going to get some holes. I feel like uh, Miro uh, may have maybe 50 to 60 on the ground, and uh, and th- these guys are going to get at least 200 uh, as a team uh, rushing yards this week. It's really going to open up the offense. Well, since you have completely <laughs> stolen my thunder, I've got to think of something else on the fly. And I'm going to go with Miro has 250 yards passing, and at least 75 yards rushing. Nice. Love it. 
And he's obviously the MVP of the game if he does that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So I, I'm going with another big day for Milrow. Uh, I, I think he could have some success both uh, with his legs and through the air. Um, so excited to see what he can do there. Uh, any bold predictions defensively for Alabama? Uh, I'm going to say we get at least uh, – I'm going to say five sacks this week. Ooh. What would that be like, three or four straight games with five sacks? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when's the last time you said that about Alabama? Was, you know, defensive <laughs> front ha- or defensive seven having five yeah, sacks and three straight I think straight right games. now Alabama's third in the country in sacks for a team. So, yeah, um, they're, they're getting after the quarterback right now. So, we've got 14 sacks. Uh, on the road, which is leads the you know entire college football. Fourteen on the road. That's that's in three games, right? South Florida, yeah. Mississippi mm-hmm. State, and A and M. Yeah, Gosh. Jeez, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that, that's amazing, dude. I mean, wow. Well, that that's I mean that's that's really not that bold considering what's been going on. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What would have been bold is you said they got du- they get double digits. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, I, my my bold prediction, Jake, is Alabama defensively records a non-offensive touchdown. Mm-hmm. A not. <laughs> a not. Yep. And I guess that – but nobody punts to Kool-Aid anymore, so I, he ain't going to no. get no punt return. They don't even punt it to him. They punt no. it out of bounds. They punt it away from him, and yeah. and, and he runs up to it and lets them hit him in the hands and fumble it. And, oh, yeah. Oh, cool yeah. No. I, I'd rather him just punt it out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, please. <laughs> That's one less a- anxious moment throughout the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my heart can't take many more, I don't think. <laughs> no, it's in a rough. But, yeah. all right, score prediction time, Jake, before we head out. Uh, and, and, by the way, guys, in the comment section, we want to hear from you guys. Give mm-hmm. us your keys to victory. Give us your players to watch. Give us your bowl predictions and your score predictions. We want to see what you guys think as well. And we love to interact with you guys there in the comment section as well. Even some of the negativity that we get, we like to interact with those people as well. So if you're an Arkansas fan or a fan of another team, jump in there as well. Uh, and, and we noticed during our watch party there was a lot of Jalen hate going on. Mm-hmm. Um, look, you're obviously free to have your opinion on Jalen Milrow. Mm-hmm. But you can't talk about all the stuff he does wrong without talking about all the stuff he does right. Right. So you can't. It's it, um, you can't. You can't be like that. He's got one of the prettiest deep ball passes oh. I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, it's on the dime every single time. Well, all I know, Jake, is if Milro plays like he did Saturday mm-hmm. each and every week. Oh my gosh, this team ain't gonna lose a game, and they'll... they won't lose, Jake. I mean, it, it, okay. There's sure. two. There's two ifs. If Milrow can play like that, and if Alabama don't have nine pre-snap penalties, yeah, then they can beat anybody, mm-hmm. anywhere, at any time. Yep, absolutely. All right, score prediction time. <laughs> Hit me, Jake. Uh, I am going to say Alabama finally gets a forty burger up on the board and say forty-two to. Let's see, is it nineteen and a half point spread? Uh, I'm going to say forty-two to sixteen. Forty-two to sixteen. I like that score. I want them to get in the forties so bad. I know, it. And, and and they may do it. And you're and you might be right, Jake. They may get to the forties this week, but they haven't done it a lot. So I'm mm-hmm. I, I don't I hate to go that high, but I'm I'm real close to you. I'm going to say thirty eight to thirteen, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the offense puts up thirty one. The defense gets another seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they got to forty. But uh, just kind of staying on the safe side and saying they they get. No, just right under 40 points to win this game, 38-13. Milrow has a really big game for Alabama once again. Continues to build week in, week out, becoming the player that we all hoped he could be. And the truth is he's still got a long way to go. That's right. both That's both a positive and – like you, there's two ways to yeah. look at that. It's a positive and a negative. Right. Yeah, he's not as good as he can be. But, man, he's not as good as he can be. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there's yeah. two ways of saying that, and they're both equally true. Yeah, and he knows it too because the way he talks and the way he, you know, he handles himself. He he knows um, that he's got to get better. If the team wants to complete its goals, he's got to be at his absolute best. And and I yep. feel like he's uh, he's an unproven product still, and we're we're seeing flashes of what he can be. But if it all goes off, and of course it's a big if, but if it all goes off, my gosh. It's, yeah, and I, I want to make I want to make a, a quick comment regarding Milrow. Mm-hmm. Everybody talks about the interceptions with Milrow. Mm-hmm. Does he throw a little bit too many than what he probably should? Maybe. I think he's got four on the year right now. Mm-hmm. 
four through six games, I can live with that. Right. I mean, that means that means eight for the season. Yeah, and two of them were against Texas. You know, that's the only. Yeah, time. I mean, so you know. like I I can live if he I can live with anything less than ten in a twelve game season. Me too. But what he can't do and what he has to get out of is taking mm-hmm. unnecessary sacks. Yes. Throw the dang ball away. Yeah, because we already get behind the chains enough with pre snap penalties. <laughs> we don't need sack yards added on that. I know. And 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 I agree with some some of the people that that, that have talked about that. His health goes in, in the situation as well. If he goes down, you know, what do we have behind him? You know, we, yeah. we've seen flashes of and I really think Ty Simpson is gonna be a really good quarterback, he just needs playing time kind of like Milro did. But at this point, Milro, I mean, if he goes down, you know, this team it's going to have to run the ball a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're not five and one right now without Jalen Milrow. Right. And if you can't see that, then I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. So All I right. agree. I yep. agree. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap up our show today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And like I mentioned, jump in the comments and go through today's lineup there on your screen and give us your thoughts and opinions on all that as well. But that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, go ahead, Jake. You got something to say? I was yawning. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, re- he's, he's ready to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be, br- be back real soon. Obviously, you'll catch us again on the Bleacher Report app on Saturday afternoon following the conclusion of Alabama, Arkansas. So we'll see you then. Until next time. Roll Tide. Roll Tide.